the struggle is always how do I tell my story to show why I want to be a physician and not this other thing anymore. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you today, Dr. Gray? I am excellent. I'm excited to talk to you and figure out how I can help you. So again, thank you for having me on, Dr. Gray. It's uh, definitely a pleasure to be here. Um, I find myself in a particular situation with my um, current profession and wanting to switch. And I guess uh, a lot of my questions are more so based in um, like my my transcripts and how they're going to be viewed when I actually apply, mm. um, especially with the degrees that I have. Um, I graduated with my bachelor's and my doctorate at the same time of last year. And a part of my doctorate program uh, was applied to my bachelor's program. Oh, that's funky. So, okay. Yeah. So I, um, I looked at a um, bunch of your podcasts, uh, YouTube, uh, kind of searched around if there was like anyone in my particular situation didn't find like the right answers for me. Yeah. So I uh, contacted um, AMC. Uh, they were super helpful as to like how I'm going to, um, when I fill out the application, how certain classes are going to apply and things of that nature. Okay. I haven't gone through that process yet, but um, I at least have some starting points. Okay. Yeah, I would love to find out what they said, but we'll I'll do that off air. Uh, okay, so what can I help you with today? Um, I wanted to know if I am either like the first chiropractor you've talked to about going through this process. Not at all. And if you just um, if you have just general insight um, about some of the previous people that you've talked to, um, again, I've. I've been listening to a lot of the information that you've been putting out. Um, I have your uh, have your book here, nice. Three Month Playbook. Uh, absolutely love it. I haven't gone all the way through through it yet, but all the bits and pieces I've read so far, uh, they've been extremely helpful. So, i i want I want some feedback from you as to some of the things that I've been doing so far, uh, okay. just so I can get some guidance here. So I took a diagnostic, I want to say about a month ago now. Okay. Um, I scored a 492. Uh, the diagnostic was through Kaplan. Okay. Uh, mind you, this is, I, I don't have like a chemistry background yep. or um, um, any physics as well. I actually started out as an art major. Okay. Um, I, uh, went to a performing arts, um, grade school and middle school. I always wanted to be a high school art teacher growing up. <laughs> uh, all of my classmates up until, uh, post high school were all, um, some kind of art based, like yeah. music, dance, visual arts. Um, I did two years, um, at my local community college back in Illinois um, received a associates in fine arts. I'm looking to finish my um, art degree, and I'm thinking to myself, uh, college is expensive. I need some kind of skill that's going to allow me to financially support myself. So I picked up a certification in uh, massage therapy because um, I absolutely love the human body. I thought it would help with um, my figure drawing classes that I had, yep. uh, which it did. And then in my massage therapy program, uh, one of my anatomy and physiology teachers was a chiropractor. And that's kind of how I got introduced to this profession. Uh, spent some time in the field as a massage therapist, working at a couple of different doctor offices. Uh, went to uh, chiropractic school right around 2017, graduated four years later with um, my bachelor's and my doctorate, and then kind of fast forward, here I am now. Yep. Um, so 
I I would guess you're probably wondering why I'm making this jump. <laughs> um, Not really, because I, I know lots of chiropractors who have made this jump, and there's always a very specific reason. For me, is the population that I want to serve. I've always wanted to serve um, people of color, um, especially the underserved and low socioeconomic neighborhoods which is why I moved to Baltimore, where the minority is the majority. Mm -hmm. Uh, Very different than the Midwest. If you can imagine, small town Iowa, where I did graduate school at, looks very different. (laughs) Not very diverse for you. No, no, not very diverse. Yeah. Um, So I wanted more access to that population. And as much as I enjoy this profession, there are their ups and downs, but it's still looked more like a luxury than a necessity. Mm. So the majority of people that are seen by chiropractors are uh, affluent. They have disposable income, (laughs) primarily white. um, Yeah. And that's particularly not the population that I want to serve. Yeah. Um, So that's one of the reasons why I'm making the job. It's kind of the population they have to serve because they're like, come back 400 times or else you're not going to be cured. Um, right. I mean, I don't want to talk bad about chiropractors. Um, the, so so that is a very interesting reason for wanting potentially to go to medical school. But it doesn't explain why you need to go to medical school because there mm-hmm. are lots of ways to serve the underserved and to serve people of color. And and you don't have to be a doctor to do that. So the question would be, um, and, and for medical schools, it's going to be more about serving as a physician. What do you need that degree for, a medical degree, uh, MDDO degree, uh, to actually impact the communities that you want to impact as a physician. So, mm-hmm. and, and obviously over time, you'll, you'll figure out that messaging, but that's going to be an important part of the messaging. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thinking about like the personal statement and kind of the questions that I'm expecting to be asked um, if and when I get to that point, um, it's, it's more than just like the population that I want to serve. It's the, um, the being that person in the in the center delegating uh someone's care uh the cultural authority um the wide variety of different treatment options that i would have for the patients that i have currently been seeing slipping through the cracks of the medical system um the ones that are overlooked uh things of that nature yeah yeah that's great so what's your concern my concern, I guess the most prevalent thing that I'm facing right now is I have to finish my prerequisites mm-hmm. and I have the opportunity to do a um, post back here in Baltimore um, that uh, they offer it at night. So it fits with my schedule working full time. Um, it's a little expensive from uh, from what I can afford right now. I yeah. also have the opportunity to kind of do like a, a do-it-yourself post back at some of the local community colleges around here, which is definitely more affordable. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out the best route for me, given that I, I have a doctorate. Um, I... My, my GPA definitely isn't the best currently. It is an upward trend, um, but also trying to figure out like how my GPA is going to look on the application because I know it it's going to be different than what it is what I see because mm-hmm. how it's divvied up. Yep, yeah. So Mapped is available for you to to check out and and just go and get create a free account and put all your courses in there and and you mm-hmm. can see all those graphs and stuff. Um, from a post back perspective. I don't think anyone needs a formal post back. There's no need to spend the extra money to to go to a formal post back unless for some reason you think you need it. 
right? You specifically need it in terms of I need that structure, I need that support. If I don't have it, I'm not going to do well. Then it may be worth paying for that level of support. If you don't need it, and you can go take the classes at, at a community college and, and those uh, classes and schedule match what you need based on your work schedule, great, go do that. Will some medical schools not really like that? Sure, you can't please everyone, but there are plenty of students every single year getting into medical school, taking community college credits as post mm -hmm. So don't worry about community college versus fancy post back that that is probably going to be three four times more expensive even more potentially it, it, that's not important yeah i was i was hoping you would say something very similar to that uh just because of the the price difference you're absolutely right i think it's like one fourth the cost um going the do-it-yourself route at the local community colleges yeah um and they have from what I can tell, um, they have a lot of great resources with their um, health advisors as well from the awesome. local community colleges here. So if I go that route, I, I have more opportunities than just like the classes that they're offering. Awesome. Um, so uh, thank you for that. Yeah. Um, so since, can, can you give me more insight as to any of the, the hiccups that um, other, like the other pre-meds that you've interacted with that were chiropractors? Yeah, there, there really aren't any special hiccups that, that uh, chiropractors, former chiropractors, now turned pre-meds or medical students. There's, there's no hiccups that are specific to them uh, that, that are different than any other health profession coming in and now wanting to be a doctor, whether it's a nurse, whether it's a PA, NP, et cetera. The, the struggle is always, how do I tell my story to show why I want to be a physician and not this other thing anymore without mm -hmm. disparaging the other thing? Right. Right. So that's, that's always the challenge that I typically see for anyone coming from another health profession. And again, that just comes with time and, and learning your messaging and going through lots of drafts of your personal statement to get to a point where it's like, okay, this is my story. And, and yes, it talks about me going through the chiropractic route, but now I want to be a doctor. And it makes sense as to why I want to be a doctor. It's not just for you specifically. It's not just serving the underserved. It's not just this thing. It's not just th that thing. But in totality, the impact that I want to make on the world has to be through medicine, MDDO, not DC. I I forget which episode I was watching, but uh, you were talking to another pre-med about um, uh, their seed and then watering their seed mm -hmm. and kind of that uh, that that turn where it's like, all right, I I kind of know that this was like something I want to do. And now I'm like, I'm definitely like heading in this direction. And I think about this uh, patient that I had when I was still in school. That was kind of my, my turn where I could see that they slipped through the cracks. And just like as a student, I felt like something was like wrong or was like unjust as to what was happening to them. And I had the opportunity to reach out to a couple of different uh, services within the community to connect them with. Mm -hmm. And it made all the difference for them. Uh, they, uh, un, un, a, I want to make sure that I'm not giving away too much, but just a, a untreated um metabolic condition that was really eating away at them and they didn't have the services to uh to help them or even the access to the services to help them so yeah. creating a list of uh all these people that they could see to get them back on track uh just as a student felt very uh i felt very humbled to do that for them so 
uh, that was kind of my, that was my turn. Like I'm, I want to take this, um, the next step further. So yeah. I created a, um, yeah. Eight so, month. so, so stop right there in, in the definition of kind of just the, this fake made up language that I've created seed and watering events around a personal statement. Uh, I I've started to call that moment for you, your pivot point. Mm -hmm. So your seat is going to lead you to chiropractic or, or maybe even massage. Um, and while you're on that journey, you have this pivot point to go, oh, crap. Like, what I'm doing now isn't going to be enough. I just know it. And I'm going to have to go to medical school to do what I want to do. And then the watering mm -hmm. events are going to be proving that that's the case, putting yourself around uh, patients and, and that interaction going, oh, yeah, like, I need to be a doctor, like a, a doctor, doctor, MD, MDDO. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been writing these notes with uh, everything that I've been seeing you talk about, and I'm slowly but surely like piece, like piecing all this together like a puzzle, and it, it's yeah. coming together. Yep. Um, I know I'm still very early in my journey, but uh, knowing that there are you know other people out there like me knowing that i have services um that you provide like map i just signed up i want to say like two weeks ago and i was like kicking myself in the butt like uh looking at all the things that you offer i'm like this is great i should have done this like forever <laughs> ago <laughs> yeah um but i'm excited to really dive into that and then like utilize it to the best of my ability yeah, awesome. I'm glad glad you found me. Um, there's lots of free stuff out there that I put out every single day. So just uh, stay stay tuned in, and uh, you have a long road ahead of you still. Um, but it's it's right there for you. And if this is what you want to do, uh, I'm excited to see you make a big impact on the communities that you want to make an impact on. Thank you so much. Um, I don't. I'm thinking about any other particular questions that I may have. Um, well, I guess, okay, so one general question that's more for clarification, but I think I know the answer. So what I'm doing now as my job, that is considered clinical experience. Yeah, I would Correct. consider it clinical experience. Okay. Yeah, I Perfect. would ideally have other clinical experience on top of it, whether that's volunteering in the ED or, or, or putting yourself around uh, non chiropractic patients just to, to get a feel of the rest of the potential clinical world out there. Just again, trying to fend off as much bias as possible to go, Oh, he only has chiropractic clinical experience. That's not good. Um, so, so just to, to vary it a little bit, obviously mm -hmm. because chiropractic medicine is your full-time job it's going to be the bulk of your hours. And that's just like, there's no other other way around that. And that's fine. Um, and I would also get physician MDDO shadowing as well to, to add on to that. Yeah, absolutely. I already have set up um, a long-term shadowing commitment with a um, PMNR uh, MD that's not too far away from me, uh, which I think is obviously where I want to end up. Yeah. Um, doing PMNR. Makes sense. Um, so I have that set up and I actually just finished up with a, um, a DO, I want to say two weeks ago with some shadowing that I did as well. So Perfect. just starting that early. Perfect. You're um, doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, uh, you may to. find <laughs> some unique experiences where, where you could actually, I, I don't know what your, your full-time job situation is now, but you could potentially go and find a PM&R office or, or uh, some uh, orthopedic office potentially where they're like, oh, like chiropractic medicine is a great adjunct to what we're doing. And we would love to have a chiropractor on staff in our clinic so that you're in and around a doctors all the time that, that may help you as well. In your opinion, do you think I, I will face some kind of bias with having most of my clinical experience as a chiropractor going through like the interview process. Yeah, probably just just kind of knowing the the general tone of of uh, the perception of chiropractors out there, uh, and and just my my general stance is we need chiropractors, right? Chiropractors are great, and there are way too many chiropractors 
practicing outside the scope of their training. <laughs> no, right. I'll, I'll leave it at Correct. that. Uh, and there are way too many chiropractors, and I, I've had lots of arguments on Facebook uh, in my local community because they'll post something, and I'm like, "You can't treat ADHD, dude! I'm like, stop it." Um, uh, uh, the the chiro- there's a lot of chiropractors that just will uh, not. Uh, in medicine, right? We talk about informed consent all the time. My wife's a neurologist. So as a neurologist, what do you think I'm concerned about uh, from a chiropractor point of view with my wife being a neurologist? Um, treating, going, trying to treat like re- ridiculopathies that are maybe like <laughs> outside of... That, that would be a good one. No, very common one, right? Neck manipulation causing yeah. vertebral dissections, right? Mm-hmm. It's very, very clear that there are some population out there that are at risk of vertebral dissection from from neck manipulation. Right. And I have a hard time when some chiropractors, not all, when some chiropractors will completely write off and go, oh, there's there's no there's no risk. Mm-hmm. Right? With informed consent, right, if if I can get a a a brain aneurysm from sneezing, then if sneezing was a medical uh, treatment, then brain aneurysm and death should be one of the risks, right? As rare right. as it could be. So when patients mm-hmm. are going in for neck manipulation, risks and benefits should be talked about as part of that treatment, right? And and I just, I don't think that's done a lot of times. And if it is done, right? Vertebral dissection leading to stroke and death, <laughs> like are, are left off. So that that's right. the, the those are my personal <laughs> thoughts. Um, but again, there there are lots of um, just negative bias towards towards chiropractors for various reasons. Again, humans are humans. Some are going to have their biases. I I think I personally, uh, again, my personal stance. I have lots of like orthopedic kind of things, and I crack my like I have ways of like cracking my back and like if I'm sitting weird I I feel stuff and I'm like oh I need to, that needs a crack and so I can understand like chiropractors are magical but I've figured out how to do it myself I have I have foam rollers and wheels and all kinds of stuff uh to to manipulate myself so um uh, but there are lots of people who just are like all chiropractors are quacks mm-hmm. and there are some physicians who are like all DOs are quacks Mm-hmm. So it's just the, you'll you'll never win from a bias perspective. So the only thing that you can do is be true to who you are, own it, go. I I wanted to be a chiropractor, right? I had a mentor, sounded cool. I could go help people, but now I don't. I want to go do this. And you don't need if if you have your own personal stuff. There's there's an awesome TikTok uh, uh, chiropractor who's like super anti, he calls it cracky backy, <laughs> um, super anti, like, uh, I forget the the acronym for the high velocity cracking, whatever. Um, uh, and, and he is on TikTok just constantly pointing out all of the like anti-science stuff that chiropractors do. Um, you don't have to go that route. Like, even if you p- personally feel like there's a lot of stuff that you don't believe in and it's like, whoa, like the stuff they taught us, um, you don't have to go down that route either. Just just be true to who, are, who you are. Here's the path I've been on. Here's why I don't want that path anymore or, or more likely, here's why I want this new path. Um, right. And, and there are going to be biases, whether it's because you're a chiropractor, whether it's because of your age, whether it's because... You're you're a person of color, whatever. You you can't control that, All right? So you just you put yourself out there, and the people that love it will want to talk to you, and the people that won't won't. It's somewhat liberating knowing that there are certain things that you can't control, mm-hmm. and there are others that you can, and then that's like the area that you work in. It's a, to... <laughs> it's, a, it's, yeah. it's a it's a it's a Venn diagram. All of life is a Venn diagram. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you have been extremely helpful. Um, I don't think I have 
any more particular questions in mind, but um, just kind of want to get your idea as to your opinion as to like where I'm at, things that I could be facing in the future, just how I'm doing in general. So, yeah, you're on the right track. 